With the Egghead arc in full swing, Chapter 1071 holds the key to all the chaos in the final saga. So, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll talk about Chapter 1071 and discuss some of the prevalent theories in the community. Make sure to watch till the end because with the end of One Piece closing in, this chapter might hold the key to the final war. The chapter starts with Bartholomew Kuma flying through the sky over paradise and crashing into the red line. It is surprising that Kuma would head back to Marie Joie after barely escaping from there with the commanders of the revolutionary army. Though it can be possible that he was trying to get to Egghead to meet his daughter, Jewelry Bonnie, who was currently trying to exact revenge on Dr. Vegapunk for what he did to her father. The reason he might have failed might be the height of the red line or the fact that his body is too broken, so he misaligned his route. There is even speculation that the celestial dragons installed some chip in his brain that makes him their loyal servant. We can all but hope that Oda expands on what is going on with Kuma because we believe that he'll somehow have a significant role in the final saga. Meanwhile, on Egghead, Cypher Pole Agi Zero has taken control of everything but the Frontier Dome, which stops anyone from invading the Frontier. Dr. Vegapunk and his satellite bodies are trying to escape with the Straw Hats. Different satellites representing a different side of Vegapunk argue with each other, with someone like Lilith wanting to fight and others like Shaka wanting to escape. All the Straw Hats are gathered in the lab. With things going south, one of the satellites mentions that they still have one more ally on the island. One that they should ask for help. That person could honestly be anybody. We have seen several theories that we'll discuss in the theory portion just up ahead. Right after Dr. Vegapunk calls that person for help, the Cypher Pole agents below notice that the Frontier Dome is deactivated, even though no life signature was detected in the security room. So, we think it is too much of a coincidence that Vegapunk asks someone for help. And right in the next second, the Frontier Dome happens to turn off. There are two possibilities. Either the person whom Vegapunk called has some scheme where he plans to gather the Cypher Pole agents on the dome and take care of them in one sweep, or that the person intends to, well, make a run for it. It is implied that the person was hiding on the island for protection, so when he learned that his gig was up, he decided to escape the heat. Once the dome is down, the Cypher Pole agents reach the frontier where Kaku tries to cut off the Straw Hat's ship by taking down Sunny Go. But to his surprise, someone is waiting for him on the ship, and that someone is Roranoa Zaro. Kaku launches a slice towards the ship, and Zaro counters it with a slash of his own. We hope that Oda expands on this in the upcoming chapters because, like Luffy vs. Luchi, Zaro vs. Kaku is something fans were looking forward to. The sudden turn of events might make you overlook something critical. Bonnie just woke up and once again tried to hunt down Dr. Vegapunk, asking why he turned her father into a pacifista. Vegapunk expresses that he can tell her the reason why he did what he did. It can be some big scheme that alludes to the fact that Vegapunk might be colluding with the revolutionary army, and his grand scheme might be along the lines of turning all the pacifista against the world government. Elsewhere in the New World, a certain ship approaches the island of giants, Elbaf, and that ship belongs to Captain Kidd. With his role in Wano country overshadowed by Trafalgar Law, it is pretty apparent that Oda wants to bring Kidd into the spotlight once again. And like Wano, Kid reaches Elbaf before Luffy and the crew. Elbaf is an island the fans have wanted to visit since the introduction to the giants Dory and Brogi on Little Garden, and we have finally reached the place. The chapter comes to a close with the story shifting to G14, where Vice Admiral Monkey D. Garp asks Dahl for soldiers to attack the Beehive Island, that is, the base for the Blackbeard Pirates. The reason for this raid is that Kobe has been kidnapped by the Commodore of the Blackbeard Pirate, Marshall D. Teach. That concludes our little chapter analysis, and we pointed out everything important to learn before moving on to the theory portion of the video. Without further ado, let us dive straight into the theories to discuss Vegapunk's plan with Bartholomew Kuma, the person Vegapunk asked for help, and lastly, how we think that the confrontation between Blackbeard and Garp will lead to the final war. Many people wonder about whom Vegapunk asked for help. As we mentioned before, it is likely someone from the Roger Pirates or the Rocks Pirates. But we are sure that more than this information is needed to satisfy your needs. So why don't we talk about specific names? 
We believe the person hiding on Egghead is... Scopper Gabon, the number three of the Roger Pirates. Many of you might be thinking that this is just not possible, but just hear us out. We know that the Roger Pirates disbanded before Roger's execution. Many might be drifting across the seas, hunted by the Marine and the government. And one of them turned out to be Gabon, who might have been saved by Vegapunk and decided to hide on Egghead. Let's talk a bit more about Gabon. He's based on a character from the show Space Share of Gabon. And in the show, Gavan uses his power called Scooper to save a famous scientist. This is too much of a coincidence that, that the character Gabon is based on happens to rescue a scientist. And we all know how Oda is with foreshadowing, so hopefully we will be introduced to the character who saves Gabon in the next chapter. This theory is an interesting one. We know that Dr. Vegapunk and Dragon have a relationship, as we saw them on the burnt Ohara paying respects to Dr. Clover. At the same time, Kuma is a part of the Revolutionary Army and the former king of the Sorbet Kingdom, who for some reason turned into a government-controlled cyborg pacifista. Although we never learned the reason, in this chapter, Bonnie asks Vegapunk why he did something so cruel to her father. And he replies that he can't answer that. So these are the hints we are left with. We believe that we can find the answer if we connect some dots. But first, let us turn the clock back 200 years when the Holy Land of Marie Joie was attacked by the Mech, a remnant of a kingdom that existed during the Void Century. A country too advanced for the scientists of this era to fathom. And the person who got his hand on the Mech happens to be the smartest man in the world. So, we believe that Kuma is Vegapunk's attempt to recreate this Mech that wreaked havoc on the Holy Land 200 years ago. And one way or another, it has something to do with Dragon. But the attempt might be imperfect because Kuma is not the perfect cyborg, which makes us think that Vegapunk lacked something that he managed to attain with the Seraphim, that is, an energy source. Therefore, Kuma might be rushing to Egghead to discuss with Vegapunk something that he discovered, and he could actually turn him into a mech from 200 years ago. Honestly, we believe that this theory might turn into reality soon. With the final war closing in, Kuma may have a more significant role in the story than we had initially anticipated. With that, let's move towards the last theory of the day. We believe the confrontation between Garp and Blackbeard will lead to the final war. For that, we'll look at the strength of the two individuals. Garp, the hero of the Marines, was responsible for taking down Rock D. Zebek during the God Valley incident. And he can knock down the Whitebeard pirate's first mate in a single punch. He was considered one of the strongest individuals, but H might have gotten the best of him. Whereas Blackbeard, Marshal D. Teach, is one of the new emperors who has two devil fruits. One of the strongest Logia, Yami Yami Nomi, and the other Whitebeard's devil fruit, Gura Gura Nomi. He is the one responsible for defeating Portoga's D. Ace and starting the war of the best. On top of that, he has a crew filled with level 6 escapees from Impel Down. So, a confrontation between the two will likely shake the world to its core. The reason why Garp is taking action is that Blackbeard kidnaps Kobe. Kobe is not someone of significance, but his involvement in the Rocky Port incident is what got him the title of hero and piqued Blackbeard's interest. His mentor, Garp, has one disadvantage, age. Like when Rayleigh faced Blackbeard, he stated that he couldn't have beaten Blackbeard at his age. We believe that the same can be said for Garp, and on top of that, he has to fight with a hostage. Thus, the most likely conclusion to this confrontation is that Garp will lose against Blackbeard in order to save Kobe, the future of the Marines. What do you think Luffy and Dragon would do if they learned about this? And we can be confident that even the Marines and several pirate groups who knew Garp would want to exact revenge on Blackbeard. Thus, this could be the event that leads to the final war. So we hope that Oda continues pumping out chapters at a good pace, and that the final saga continues to give us an adrenaline rush with every chapter. So, what do we think will happen in chapter 1072? We believe that the person whom Vegapunk asks for help will make an appearance, Zaro vs Kaku will proceed, and finally, the Straw Hats might manage to escape Egghead by the end of it. Also, like the last chapter, a total banger might be revealed at the end of the chapter. That sums up this week's chapter of One Piece. Every chapter of this Egghead arc lives up to the expectation of the final saga. The things related to the Void Century, Origin of Devil Fruits, Vegapunk himself, and Albaf are topics that fans have been speculating about for decades. And finally, the truth is being unraveled right before our eyes. 
We did make our predictions, but honestly, Oda can always think of something unexpected and catch us all off guard because that is what being a One Piece fan is all about. If you enjoyed it, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Check out our next video here if you want to stay connected with the One Piece community. On that note, allow me to take a leave and I'll be back soon with another video. Peace.